together, all the tribes of Israel, and he charges them to remember. So in a sense, what Joshua is asking the people to think about is what is your story? And he goes through and he reminds them that long ago, God called them as people. First through Abraham, and then that is continued through Isaac and Jacob and Esau. And then further fulfilled through Moses and the release of Israel from Egypt. They are reminded of God's provision and his faithfulness to them. Verse 13 specifically reminding them that he gave them a land that they did not toil, cities that they did not build, vineyards and olive groves that they did not plant. God had been at work in their lives and there is a story to tell. There is a very clear reason and purpose behind this as verse 14 and the next part of the Joshua chapter we will read uh, will let us see. But before we go that far, I would just like us to pause as the Church of God here in Salvi and Cosington and Seagrave and just to think about what our own story is. See, Joshua wanted the people to stop and to remember what God had done for them. And we, like the tribes of Israel, are gathered here together this morning. As we are gathered, I wonder, what is our own individual story? What is it that we know that God has done for us? Because God is at work in everybody's life. We all have a story to tell. I don't know about you, but sometimes in the fast pace of life, it's very easy to kind of forget what God has done. It's very easy to focus on the now and to forget what God has promised. It's very easy to kind of not make time for God and to live as if he isn't really the most important part of me. And the reason for that is that sometimes I just forget what God has done for me. So may I ask us, as the family of God here, what is your story? May I ask you, what has God been doing in your life? May I ask you, what has he given you that you are thankful for? May I ask you, how has God encouraged you in your life? Can I ask you, what difference has God made in your life? How has he changed you? What has he brought into your life that has made it so different? Can I ask you, what is your story? See, it doesn't matter how old you are, we all have a story to tell. Because God is a living God. God is at work in our lives, has been, is now, and will be in the future. It's really essential, as Joshua knows, that at times we stop and we think and we reflect. So I'd just like to invite us in a few moments of silence just to think about what our story is. What is it that God has done for us? There's a very visual way of re remembering that. Uh, Peter and Eleanor are just going to come and light a candle for us and read some words that will help us just to focus and to reflect for a moment on what our story is.
for you are our God, our strength and our shield. You are the one who has changed our lives, has loved us and redeemed us, has brought, uh, has brought light into darkness and created new life. We come to you in awe and wonder, for you are the definer of our lives, for you are ours and we are yours. We pause to remember all that you have done for us, for you are our God, our rescuer and our friend. So it's a really important part of what Joshua is asking the people to do. For he recounts their past, he gets them to remember their story, and then he speaks these words to them. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it for us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our fathers up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we travelled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord, because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord, our God, and obey him. So on that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people and at second he drew up from them decrees and laws And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up under the oak, near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua sent the people away each to his own inheritance. See, Joshua says, reflect on your story, know who God is, what he has been to you, and now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Joshua uses the reflection of the past to focus the mind on the now and to get the people to recommit to serve the Lord with all faithfulness. In doing this, he brings them to a place of commitment. (laughs) And actually, he seems to me to make something really, really clear, which is about all of our relationships with God. Simply, it would seem to me that there is no sitting on the fence when it comes to our response to God. We can either choose to follow him, or we choose to follow something else. 
Joshua makes this really, really clear. The people have a choice to make. Follow God or follow the other gods. It's not a decision they can fudge. And it's not a decision we can fudge. Nor can we dismiss the truth that we are rejecting God if we choose not to follow him. To say that we are just not made a decision yet, or that as far as we're concerned he doesn't exist, or that really faith isn't our kind of thing, is just fudging the issue. Either you choose to follow God, or you choose to follow someone else. Whether we like it or not, we have to make that decision. Whether we like it or not, Joshua speaks clearly about the gods that the people's ancestors used to serve. And he says, you must put these away. You must put these to aside. To focus on the one God, you must put them aside. Today, is there any difference really? Today, all of us as individuals have a choice to make. Either to follow the living God, or we follow other gods. Whether it be the gods of materialism, popularity, success, fame, or even the God of atheism or indecision. We all follow something. Sometimes as the people of God, we actually follow God, but we also follow other gods as well. And God wants to deal with that and to challenge us about that. And that's what Joshua's really getting to the heart of, isn't he? He's saying, remember the God that you have followed. Know who he is. And choose again today to recommit to him. You see, commitment is a key aspect of our faith and our life with God. And at times, I believe that God calls us to make specific commitments. I still remember as a teenager the first time that I stood up and I said, Yes, I want to follow Jesus. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that I'm forgiven. I want to follow him. And I made that commitment. But many times over my life, God has brought me to a point where he's asked me to remake that commitment again in some way. To either take me deeper into a relationship with him or to challenge me about something that I just needed to let go of to be able to move on with him. And that's what Joshua does in a sense, doesn't he? He calls the people together. He says, remember your God. Make a commitment. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua stands up in front of all the people and says, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. For us as a church family, as individuals, for many of us we may have followed God for many, many, many years. But I just have a sense that this passage is speaking to us about God just wanting to bring us together again as a family of God and to say, is this a time for us to recommit? Is this a time for us to refocus on what it is God wants of us? Do we feel that longing to know God more? Do we feel that desire to want to actually follow him in a different way? Do we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us, saying, come deeper, come deeper? See, when Joshua stands up and he makes that statement, he is saying, I commit myself to be in whoever God wants me to be, in whatever situation, for I will serve the Lord. Maybe, as you hear that, maybe you've never made a commitment. Maybe you've never really thought about the fact of, well, I'm not sure, do I believe this or don't I believe this? Maybe today... Maybe you might hear the voice of God, which is saying, I am here. I do love you. Maybe today is a chance to say, yes, I will follow you. Maybe for you that's something. Maybe for others it's just an opportunity to remind ourselves of what God has done in our lives and to recommit ourselves to be the people that God wants us to be in the situations that he has called us to be. And so I'd just like again to offer us a few moments of silence to actually just reflect on that statement that Joshua makes and to say to God, what does this mean for me? What are you asking of me? 
What are you calling me to? Should we just be silent and just to think and just to listen to the small voice of God who is here in this place, who wants us to know his love and wants to call us into a deeper and deeper relationship with him. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. One of the ways in which we express our corporate belief is through the written word. Uh, the creed is a really important aspect of our Anglican tradition. And uh, I came across a slightly different version of it the other day. And I just thought at this moment, as we think about what Joshua has said, and what I kind of think God might be asking of us, it would be really useful to maybe just join together and to read the words of this creed. Uh, they're on the screen. I suggest we're just going to remain seated for this. But if we could speak together as a way of coming together as the family of God to say, yes, we, as the family of God, in Cosington, Seagrave and Salby, we will serve the Lord. And this is what we believe. Shall we say together the words? We believe in one God, the eternal power of life and goodness the maker of space and time, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God, our maker, whose love fires the sun, whose word made the world, whose law is good. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the intimacy of God with creation, whose breath lives in all life, whose peace gathers the church, whose love sends people in mission. We believe in one God, our maker, saviour and helper, a trinity of beauty and holiness, a community of joy. To this holy and awesome God, we give glory and praise, now and forever. Amen. To this holy and awesome God, we give glory and praise, now and forever. There was one little final thing that struck me about the passage in Joshua. I think it kind of had something to do with baggage. I don't know about you, but I always seem to take too much with me when I go on holiday. It always slows me down, always seems to get in the way, always lose something, can never get enough stuff in the boot of the car. Um, I was just really struck by two verses, and I'd like you to look at them with me if you could. In verse 21 and 22, if you still have the Bible open, if not, don't worry. What we see is the people recommit to save the Lord, to serve the Lord. They make this bold commitment. They say, "We will follow God." Now, if I was them, I was probably feeling pretty good at that moment because I thought, "Yes, this is it. I'm going to follow God. This is brilliant. I'm really excited by this." And then Joshua says this. He says, "Throw away the foreign gods that are among you." And yield your hearts to the Lord. Throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord. I was really struck by that challenge. But then I kind of reflected on my own experience of God. I know that God is not satisfied with leaving me as I am. He is committed to bringing me closer and closer into a relationship with him. Where in the past there have been things that he needed to deal with, he has dealt with them. Either through the written word, through his Bible, I've read it and it's spoken to me and it's challenged me. Whether through the council of friendship, where someone's come alongside me and said, you know Andrew, you really need to think about this. 
or even through just the still voice of God speaking to me in my own heart. God is not satisfied with how I am. Now that does not mean that he does not love me as I am now. God loves me unconditionally, but he is not satisfied because he knows what I can be if I can move from where I am. And I think what Joshua is saying to the people here is, you've made this commitment, but there's still stuff we need to deal with. I don't know about you, but I know there is still stuff in my life that God needs to deal with. And can I just wonder again today, as we think about making that commitment, we think about what God has done to us, for us, are there things in our lives which we know that God needs to deal with? Are there things in our lives that we need to let go of, to put aside? Are there situations in our lives that we need to know God's grace and God's forgiveness and God's love? Is there change? Is there a need for movement? Is there a need for some encouragement? Is there a need for some healing? Is there a need for some forgiveness? See, because we all carry baggage, but God does not want us to hold on to that baggage. He wants to be the friendly porter on the train station who comes along and says, I'll take that for you and take it away. Because he wants us to be the people he has created us to be. If that speaks to you today, may I encourage you to share that with somebody? Somebody that you know that's close. Maybe get them to pray for you. Or maybe at the end of the service, if you just felt that there's just something that you need God to deal with, or you need some encouragement, or you need some lo love from God shown in certain ways, then please consider coming forward. Uh, we offer prayer at the end of our services, down in Chancellor at the end there. If that's something that God has kind of just pointed at you, or itched you, then please take that moment. Because God wants the changes. He is dissatisfied with how we are. Not because he doesn't love us, but just because he wants us to be. See, when Joshua said, put these things aside, he did it because he knew what the people could become. I love the line at the end. The people went to their inheritance. I wonder today, what will be our inheritance? What is it that God wants of us? What is it that God wants to give us? So let us remind ourselves of God's past goodness and faithfulness. Let us commit ourselves to his service. Let us embrace the challenge and change that he brings into our lives. And let us reflect on that statement made by Joshua. And may that be our statement for us today. For as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. As for us and our households, we will serve the Lord. For the Lord is good and the Lord loves us. We're going to use the words of the confession in a few moments. Um, we're just going to put it up on the screen, right? Confession is a way of just kind of clearing some of that stuff. It's just reminding ourselves that God is not satisfied with us, and we're not satisfied with ourselves because we want to change. Just invite us to just take a few moments to think about those words to think about what it might mean for us to move deeper into a relationship with God so that we can more fully <coughs> serve the Lord. Shall we say together the words printed on the screen and on the sheet? Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image on us. 
we are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. We are the children of light. We are the children that have been rescued. And as such, should we stand together to worship the one who rescued us. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name.